Cruise 5, we are in Mchinji. Guys are in to be specific, and we're here to meet a man who is the most celebrated, the most accomplished jazz producer, songwriter, and also singer, Eric Pagliani. Welcome to the show. Great. How are you, how are you my brother? I am fine. How are you? Great, great. What is this place? This is where I'm hiding for now. <laughs> hiding? <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't like the sound of that. I thought you were here to stay. Um, just hiding? Well, look, there's a plan that I want to implement. Okay. And then before I could implement it, I wanted to be in a place where I can actually try it out. Okay. Because Malawi is quite a unique uh, place. Yes. So as much as you've done jazz all over in Southern Africa, mostly yes. and a bit of out there in overseas, uh, I, I wanted to, to implement a plan that can work for Malawians and not necessarily bring in a plan and, okay. and force it on um, Malawians. Okay. So I think one of the best ways to do that was to come in and study the things that, uh, that are happening. Okay. So a bit of a research, it's been about a year now okay. and I think the research is over. So I'm, I'm quite aware of what I can do and mm -hmm. how I can contribute. Uh, to the Malawian industry, but also align it with the world, which is one of my biggest uh, uh, ambitions. We've traveled all the way from Nilong, yes, almost two hours and thank to you. meet you. Thank you very much. Just so we can know more about you. Great. Where were you born? I was actually born in Blanta. Okay. And I think everyone who was born in Blanta will say I was born at the Queen's Elizabeth. So. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I think that's probably <laughs> the only sensible hospital that was there in those days. <laughs> Yeah, I was born in Blanda on the 6th of September 1975. Yeah, so I'm, and I'm a Blantarian. Yes, Blantarian. Where exactly were you? Were your parents this time? Uh, at that point, I think my parents were staying in Mandala, which okay. wasn't uh, so far away from there. All right. And then I think, uh, but, but but where I remember as a young uh, yes, young growing, up, growing up, my uh, 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 so uh, so uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's my childhood okay. uh, place. That's where everything started. Yes, friendships. Yeah, uh, playing guitar. Yeah, uh, playing soccer. But also, Udarish in Kalango, if yeah. you remember, uh -huh. where now it's uh, the Maone Estate. Yes. So that was like almost our, our play playing field. The jungle where you go yeah. just do anything. Yeah, that, discover life. That young people do exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how many were you in the family growing uh, up? We oh, were only two. Only two? Yeah, and my sister, I think Penelope Palian, she's also a journalist. Ah, yeah, so, the, so there are only two in your family? Just two of us. You know, at one point, I was like, I hated it in there. Yeah. So sometimes I liked it. What? Sharing what well, is so, But I mean, like, okay, so we, we are in Africa, we're in Malawi, where we have got extended families, yeah. and uh, although there might be two of you, there's always somebody in the family. Yeah. Was it just the two of you and uh, your parents growing up, or there was always somebody in the family? No, there was always an uncle visiting, there yes. was aunts visiting. And, yes. Uh, uh, my mom was also uh, very strong, mm -hmm. but she also worked for Red Cross. So okay. she, she was more into. Uh, she came from a 
giving family, but yes. strong as well. Yes. So yeah, you, you, you needed to understand that the bed might be some uh, visitor's bed tonight. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. okay. So you always, you always, yeah, they, I hated that. <laughs> I hated that. Cause I mean like they'll say, okay, so you guys, you move yeah. because we've got a visitor and yeah. they're going to use the bed yeah. and then you have to sleep on the couch you or maybe know, on the yeah. floor. Yeah. But pass up and even you're like, ah, yeah. when are they going? Exactly. You know, that so kind of we, thing. We, we grew up like that. Exactly. Yeah, so people exactly. passing by. But, yeah. but as a family, yeah, we were, uh, mostly I'd say with our, my uncle Sam, okay. who almost grew up, uh, he was with us when he went, went to get married. So. Okay. But basically, uh, it's more family, but with lots and lots of uh, loving uh, relatives. What was your dad doing at this time? When he moved to Maoni, he had gone back to study law. Okay. Uh, he was a musician on one side. Okay. Uh, running so many bands, which we'll get to that. Yeah. But then he was also uh, eventually a magistrate. Ah, uh, was he? So he uh, initially worked for uh, the Malawi News Agency as an editor. Okay. Uh, for a while, but I think with the moving and the trying times of politi politics and journalism at that point, he decided to go back to you know Chancellor College and study law. So I think when I was like in Standard One, I remember walking around the corridor yeah. and memorizing like uh, cases. And, uh, it was one of yes. it, it, I saw him really struggling. So you grow up there and you're growing up as a kid and I'm sure that's where you did your primary school. Yes. And then from there, how did things go? Where did you do your secondary and then? So I, I did a bit of, uh, you know, roaming around in those days. I did a bit of St. Kizito Primary School. Yes. Uh, then I, I came to Lirongo for a while okay. uh, and did, I think, a year at Chiwoko when I was in Standard 7 now. Okay. But then I went back to Nkologot mm -hmm. Primary on Standard 8. And yes. then from there I went to Crazy Secondary School. Okay, in, uh, that's, that's up north. Up north. Yes. Yeah, and that's where now uh, I did my four years. A bit of, I, I did a stint at Blanca Secondary School for about... Were you not dismissed at some point? Yes. Kicked about, out of school? Uh, unfortunately, yes. What happened? Um, Big miscalculation. I had gone to, <laughs> I had gone to Blanta Secondary School, okay. I think in from three, yeah. and then I think, uh, I think cultural differences. Praise was more like hustle, okay. you know. Uh, it was very tight. Yeah. You know, you know, people come from all over the place, but the hardships of the place and also the, the way the teachers kind of groomed uh, the praise students. You were more like, you know, together. Mm -hmm. So when I went to London Secondary School, I think it was too free for me. Yeah. Uh, then eventually, I think there was a day I didn't even go to, to study, but there was a teasing that had happened. Yeah. So the, the headmaster decided to dismiss <laughs> all the guys that were not in class. No, I don't know where you were. Maybe you were involved. Uh, well, I mean, it's a long story, man. <laughs> uh, but that's what we're still going to lay down today. <laughs> What happened at Blanter? <laughs> <laughs> then I went back to praise the school. <laughs> there was teasing. Yeah. You were not in class. No, I wasn't. And they thought you were involved in the teasing. Oh yeah. Well, and uh, they had to they had to kick you out. All the people. Were you involved in the teasing? Not at that specific time. No. So after that, um, I understand you went to Zimbabwe um, mm -hmm. to, 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 to do your tertiary education. Yeah. Where exactly did you go I, to? I went to Harare Polytechnic. Okay. Uh, I was doing a, uh, what we call procurement. Ah. So I wanted to be a, a purchaser. <laughs> so I, Never worked out, I think. Um, look, it was a, an agreement with my parents. Okay. So at, at that particular time, the, the bag of playing music had also kicked it in. Well, I come from a family of musicians. Yes. So, the, well, there was one condition at home. Uh, do uh, at least a degree or a, a higher diploma. Then, then with that, you can go and become a musician if okay. you want. So they start, the idea was after that, I go to uh, Zimbabwe Ethnomusicology. Okay. Uh, where Waliko was also, Waliko Makawa, ah, was also Waliko studying Mokawa. at the yes. time. So yeah. we were, he was studying at the Ethnomusicology. I was uh, you were doing on the purchasing side of things. Yeah. 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 So How long did you stay there? I, I did, unfortunately, I did three years. Okay. And then my parents passed on. Oh. So okay. life had to change. Yes. Yeah. So I, that's when I come back to Malawi now. Yeah. So in Malawi, I, I came back in 95 properly. Yeah. And I finished the purchasing with uh, the Chartered of uh, Purchasing and Supply. Okay. Uh, right here. And I actually got a very good teacher. I can't remember his name. Yeah. And I kept asking. I said, "Why did I even go to Zoom?" Because yeah, yeah. This, this, this guy is yeah, good. Yeah, I could have good. just stayed. Yeah, yeah. So after that, so I was doing that and also joined at the Acacia's band. So that's where now the music thing starts as well. What you start, what you started in Zim mm -hmm. wasn't really what you wanted to do, was it? It, it was, was just 
It was. Yeah. Uh, at that particular time, we, we could sense that music was becoming also corporate. Yes. Meaning that there was no one without a manager or without a business, uh -huh. uh, 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 like having a personal manager, have a, people that check your accounts, you know, people that are advising on what to do. So we could now, there were trends where but we saw that people were becoming more of a, a musician and understanding the business side of music. So we didn't have any course that offered the business of music. Uh -huh. So we, we asked ourselves, so why I, I, I went to Zing was because in every course of business, whether it was business accounting, or whatever you're majoring in Zimbabwe, they required you to do other business uh, subjects. So even though I was doing like purchasing and supplying, I was doing business maths, I was doing business law, I was doing business English as well. So presentation of letters, mm -hmm. how you deal with contracts, etc. So it, for me personally, it was actually a plan of empowering my music side. It wasn't actually not, want, not wanting to do that. That's... It was a proper plan of saying, I need that information so that I can also understand the business side of music. That's a different approach because mm -hmm. that's, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a plan to say, I'm going to get the information so I can understand the business law. Yeah. The guy does not understand investment. You need to get a guy who understands investment. So this is a business. So that's why we forced ourselves a jack, a jack of portraits. We had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking a jack of portraits today. <laughs> Our guess is very funny. <laughs> Let's talk music. What kind of music do you like? I know you are you you, you are a jazz artist, mm -hmm. but you must have been exposed to all kinds of music growing up. Mm -hmm. What kind of music did you grow up listening to? Um, my dad was a jazz fanatic and blues. Ah, yeah, and, blues. The, and and all aspects of. Jazz, so from yes. swing yeah. to you know John Scofield, you know the magadjets, So and also him also was a very good piano player. Oh. Wedding, but the guitarist too. Eh. So on another side, you know, when you come, my piece, I got a guy like Handel, you know, my symphony number six, you know. Sometimes we make it out, most of us are over. Eh, eh, eh. So I grew up also kind of that was my early uh, introduction to music. So ah. I listened to a lot of blues, especially Hendrix, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix. Like we heard. Yes, a lot of George Benson. George Chiana. Benson. Mm. Um, be, uh, he was also a, uh, had a band called yeah. the Jazz Connection at that time. The uh, the Jazz the Connection, Jazz Connection. So Richard Parian and the Jazz Connection. Ah, uh, so they were also practicing at home. Okay. So Mamba, so obviously that was my favorite eh. band. Yeah, uh, eh. which was also one of the famous tracks. Yes, yeah. Komano, you know, when I so I used to love a lot of Malawi music. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you must have been in the sounds pentagons. Oh yes, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't Sounds pentagon. I band your own. Rock, When you listen to his music now yeah. and what he says he used to play, I mean, they're worlds apart. I'm not going to go to the Zan one is. Come on, look at my mother, my wife, 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 what song would that be the first song? Uh, play me something from Richard Bonner. Richard Bonner, oh my god, that guy is, is fantastic. Yes. Yeah, imagine my Yeah, yeah he's a, he's a, I like him because he's, a, he's an African who is not scared yeah. to show off Africa and himself to the world. And I think that's an approach we need to have as an African artist. Let's sample something from Richard Bonner. Eric Parian is a man who has grown up around music and he is a musician in almost every aspect of that. How many musical instruments do you play? Um, I, come to, I can comfortably say that I'm a guitarist. Yes. But uh, along the way I've played, uh, I used to play good piano yeah. uh, when I was younger. Mm -hmm. 
But then when I moved to South Africa, I saw some great piano players. I was like, Ah, I think he. Yeah, yeah let me leave I this think side. this is the one. Like, the way this guy is playing. Yeah, so I play a bit of, uh, you know, piano, a bit of bass. Yeah. Uh, but I'm a guitarist. Uh, mm. That's what I am. Moving to South Africa, uh -huh. how did that happen? I joined the Cassius Band, as I said, in 95. Okay. So I did 95 and 6, made about 98. And then I realized that we had, we were famous. Yes. Uh, the money was good. Yeah. But knowledge wise, yeah. I don't, I felt like I was not where I needed to be. Okay. So in those days, the options were either you hustle to the States, yeah. or London, yeah, or, yeah. or you can hustle on a bus. Yeah. To SA. To South Africa. So, uh, under my situation, then I saved up a bit of money. South Africa. And I decided, let me yeah. go to South Africa and see mm -hmm. how, what's happening there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I decided, I think, later, uh, late 98 to, to start kind of visiting South, South Africa mm -hmm. on a test. Team yeah. Mom. So you'd go yeah, on come back. Three months. My, yeah. I could only get three months visas. Yeah. Then, yeah. And, go, <laughs> and yeah, so then eventually, Gradually, yeah. I, I penetrated South Africa. Wasn't it difficult? Because, I mean, South Africa, compared to Malawi, mm. is quite huge. And, uh, and the music industry here, there is like mm. tenfold bigger than Malawi. Yeah. yeah. It was, it, it was uh, massive. It was uh, one of the most toughest battles yes. I ever took in life. Yes. Uh, because uh, in those days, also, we didn't have internet. Yeah. So we didn't really, couldn't research properly about So you didn't know what was going on there? No, you were just going to the wall. You just go there, yeah. then you're like, oh my god, what did I get myself into? <laughs> I wish I had known about this before I came. <laughs> yeah, I know. So yeah, it took certain things that happened very pretty easy these yeah. days. I didn't have it, I didn't have it. I yeah. Did. yeah. So um, uh, it was one of those decisions that I just went. But then every challenge was what I was looking for. Because yes. also South Africa gives you answers to it problem yes so as much as it's, it's difficult to penetrate mm -hmm. there are ways uh, we don't want to grant them and we don't want to be great yeah what does one and when i saw money be great managers of the mom been a man or not yeah it also taught me to be strategic about yeah. as to what i want in life and you ended up uh, joining Reverend Benjamin Dube's band, yes. which I think must have been phenomenal at that time, because Benjamin Dube, I mean, in in this part of Africa, he's he's huge. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from a contemporary point of view, Benjamin yeah. was the biggest uh, artist then, and Joaz. Yeah. So they were like kind of competing, you know, uh, in terms of uh, popularity, the prominence. But then, uh, yeah, prominence, as mm -hmm. you may put it. Yeah. But then, in terms of uh, 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 music. I, I, I was leaning towards Benjamin, you know, because he was still, in those days, still very semi yeah. uh, old school American yeah. and a South African tradition. Yeah. So that's what I was mixing. So blues featured a lot in those uh -huh. things, you know, with my bluesy background. Yeah, yeah. I think that was like the place I really felt perfect. comfortable to join. Yeah. Meeting Zamajobe, uh -huh. what was it like? Um, it was also a, a time looking for opportunities okay. uh, because she was uh, she would uh, visit the choir, mm -hmm. so she's actually from the Benjamin Dube area. Okay, uh, but then then eventually she joined the pop idols and then became like another five. Mm -hmm. So they were looking for a producer to produce her uh, album, even if she didn't win. I wanted someone to produce. Okay. So uh, we had jammed a bit, obviously, you know, you jam and you have an understanding, you know, share the same likes like reggae, jazz, uh, that mixture, African music. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so when they asked her as, uh, who can produce her album, she said, man, I think this guy can do it. Wow. So that's how it started, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How was the, how has the journey been like from that time? Because I think you produced, uh, is that two of our albums or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah. I, I did two of our albums and okay. also I was a music director in a band for quite a while. But um, um, very, very interesting because when I started producing the first album, I didn't even know exactly what a producer's job <laughs> was. So, like enough, but then, you know, computers are appear. Yeah, so, so, so you, you know, had the internet, so you yeah, always go and say, okay. Research yeah. my roles, you know, and like, oh, you put up a budget, like, yeah. how do I put it? Then eventually also that knowledge from... Purchasing uh, each uh, other. Yeah, came in now, like, yeah, I, I, I yeah. think I know what to do, uh -huh. I know how to do this. Know, write a business proposal. Yeah, uh -huh. this, this is what I need to do. You need to do this way. Oh, Oh, that guy can write it for me because yeah. I've seen his proposals. Yeah, I so like his he's, approach. He's good at things. I mean, I'm going to talk about it. Because some of the times I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. Aha, aha. For him, I'm going to talk about it. 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 
Yeah, and the bear away. This guy doesn't know how to do his thing. Yeah, That's our guest today, Eric Palian in Cruise Five, our second song. Um, start up of my career in in, in South, South Africa. Yes. Well, there's a song that everyone kind of relate yes. me with, yeah. uh, and that's Ndawayandu, which I produced for the artist in mention, yes. Zamajobe. Zamajobe, Ndawayandu. Let's, let's sample that track. So you've met them all. You've met Hugh Masekela, mm-hmm. Temba Mkize, mm-hmm. Zamajobe, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, th- these are great people that you have met. Mm-hmm. What, what is it like working with these people, meeting them in person? Because to some of us, they're just names, big names. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think as you go along in your music career, you, you, you realize that there's a, the artistical side of, uh, of a person, mm-hmm. and then there's a personal side of a human being. Yes. <coughs> so mostly you find that in, uh, with like Bry Hughes and them, um, very, very uh, simple guys yeah. in personality. Yeah. You know, you can come here. You make in five minutes. You you you've been at the bomber. Yeah. You know, met certain friends. Yeah. Is is doing his thing. But in once you work with them, you realize also they are very serious people that can come off the, their personalities to drive the art and the personality of the art. So humor secular the artist. Yeah. And humor secular the person. The person. person they're not the same thing. Totally. So when I'm on stage, I'm with humor secular the artist. I'm working. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm 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 aware of him. He can even shout at me on stage. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's allowed because he's the boss it's at that business. particular time. It's business. And then after that, you know, yeah, if right. he needs to mention it, he'll yeah. mention it. But it, life goes on. Yeah. So that's one thing I learned also with meeting most of these uh, uh, stars is that. They are extremely serious with their their artistry. Aga Kabanchito, I made a Zanchito. Umaso aga Kabudi aga. Oje is that okay? Now. The one that I told you, I'm in Bomo Opsha Gombiri. Bomo Opsha Zadu aga Joga Kabanchito. I end up there. Hmm hmm hmm. Chimene jomene 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 but when you're on stage, my I mean, friend, enough. that's your office. Yeah. So funny it all be. When you were in South Africa, so all you were doing was music? Or there was something else you were doing on the side? Um, it's been all music related. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, that's when I realized that you don't have to be a guitarist only. So I would produce. Uh, I was running a small studio, mm-hmm. uh, but also with my good friend Marvel Solomon. Mm-hmm. We, we're still currently running a small label <coughs> called Maverick Sounds, but we're trying to. One of the reasons why I'm here is to ensure whether we can grow that small label. Okay. So that we, you know, we call it more something more African, mm-hmm. and also it's uh, it's more Southern African oriented. So I ran a bit of a uh, record label. Um, I did a bit of songwriting. So yeah. all the branches of music, that's what I would do. But. Uh, um, in my earlier years, to get in there, yeah, you yeah. know, not good. Hustling, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something to put photos on the table. Yeah, but it will be at a music shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you school. learn any South African languages? Oh, yeah? Yeah, 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 like like what what languages? I see school in school, man. I got cool food. I didn't know when the man pull up on me. Because for you to get by there, I mean, you just have to learn those languages. Yeah, but also, I mean, I got to, to see the similarities with our own language. And they similar. Yeah, so you find that once you look at it from a grammatical point of view, yeah, you find that the words yeah. are actually the, the same words, like yeah. nyama and nyama. Ah, I'm not starving. I'm going to my wallet. I'm going to my wallet. I'm going to so, but you you've been uh, you you've been 
quite in many places. We know Zimbabwe, you've been there, mm -hmm. South Africa, mm -hmm. Malawi, obviously. Where else have you been to? Where else have you lived? Yeah. Like, um, I, I did a bit of Botswana. Okay. Never what, what, what was happening in Botswana? I was hustling. Hustling in Botswana? Was, before I went to South Africa. That's the last place you'd want to go and hustle. No, I wanted to hit South Africa from this angle. Oh, so, so you <laughs> went through Botswana, hustled a bit, and then poof. It never went. <laughs> So I kept that and I decided to go straight. Um, but well, like, uh, and then visiting a bit, you know, like uh, I've done quite a lot, like Namibia, yeah. uh, you know, Swaziland, yeah. Lesotho, you know, and uh, there was a time I did about 10 days in Tripoli. Wow! But I was lost. Yeah. It's another long story. <laughs> Why you didn't know the language or no, no, no. I arrived there and no one came to pick me up at the, at the airport. <laughs> so I was the only African. You know, put it straight, I was the only black boy there. Dreadlocks and a guitar. And all Arab looking characters. So What? Yeah. And nobody was there to pick you. Uh, and then the, the language, I mean it's not like you can know where to go. There's always you a don't even know how to call a cab. I, no no, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. There, there's a guy who was a, a taxi uh, driver yeah. who came to me and looked in my eyes and said, You lost. <laughs> and he said, it's, it's Ramadan, I come for you after 10 minutes, you are lost. I'm like, Hey, I'm not lost. So I tried all <laughs> You're trying to act up. Like, like, at this time, you knew that guy was not coming. Uh, no, I, you were hoping that. I thought the guys would come pick me up, but I, it never happened. Then that's the, actually the guy who, kept, who was saying I'm lost is the guy who helped me a lot. The taxi driver? Yes. So the taxi driver came to, what yeah. What had he gone to Tripoli to do? I was playing with an artist called Sutuga as a horse. Okay. Yeah, so uh, a day before that, I was playing with those, another artist in South Africa, Judith. Yeah. And then it was a government gig. That Judith was, Sepuma? Yes. Ah, okay. So Judith and Sutuka has agreed, no, no, we need the same guitarist. So yeah. I said, no, he can leave the next day. After doing the show, he's going to come. Uh -huh. Aha. So they went, uh, Sutuka and them went earlier. And I had to join them through Egypt. I flew through Egypt into Tripoli. But then when I arrived there, there was no one. You know, then, How did you find your way home? Uh, and I couldn't change my ticket. That was also a funny thing. It was one of those, it wasn't an electronic ticket. It was yeah. an actual ticket. Yes, so you yes. can't change those ones. Yeah. So I had to be, I had to be there the, the, for the 10 days. Uh, so I, you I was, never made it to the show? I never met them. I met the guys like uh, maybe seven days later. Oh my goodness. And I was like a how, proper Tripoli. <laughs> How did you survive uh, all those days in Tripoli with nobody to talk to? Well, I made friends eventually. Guitar and dreadlocks. Really? Work. But and then this has got its own language as well, I guess. Yes, so sure. this spoke for you? Yes. And, and that as well, yeah, the dreadlock, it yeah, spoke. for sure. What language did the dreadlocks speak? Uh, peace. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> How long have you grown this dreadlock for? Uh, these are 11 years now. 11 years? Yes. Oh my God, that's a long time. Yeah. Ever thought of cutting it? Uh, when time is right, I'm not really passionate about them. Yeah, uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's part of me. Yes, I take care of them. But yeah, you know, I'm ties in a dance in Madurugira. Hey, what are the interesting things yeah. that you have experienced with your dreadlocks? I guess there must be stereotypes already. Like, oh, oh yeah, I mean, in in South Africa, it, it, it's no one notices them. Yes, it's become part of the uh, there's the Rasta culture. Yeah, but also yeah. there's the the natural African culture of embracing naturalness in terms of hair and, yeah. and presentation. Yeah. Um, uh, I was in Maputo last November. Mm -hmm. Hey man, huh? every corner the police will stop you and search you. Yeah. Uh, what What were they looking for? Uh, They'll be looking for you know. At that point, they said we have in Maputo there's a, a drug problem. Ah, so, so they think the when they see there is a dreadlock. Yeah, that was what they probably. Yeah. Something in the pocket. Yeah. Ah. So it's, it's part of those. So you need those kind of, uh, uh, you know. They, but but they're also open ways. You know. Sometimes you find that police are like, ah, no, stop. I know. so it, it depends. You know. <laughs> you take it as they come. We, growing the dreadlock was it about the rust thing or it was just about style? What what exactly was it like? Because oh, I know it, it can be, as you say, it can be interpreted differently. It's more about being African. Okay. Yeah. That's. Uh, that's my presentation of the true passions of an African. Not Rastafarianism. Uh, part of Rastafarianism is African. You are, are you a Rasta? No. Do, do you go to church? Um, that's a good question. When I have time, I pray. Okay. But I pray every time I play music. 
<clears throat> so there's a, a lot more spirituality in my music. But I come from, I've played at church, I know church songs. Uh, if, if there's a time, I'll pray. But uh, yeah, I'm not a raster. Growing up, yeah. were you going to a particular church yes. as a young kid? Yes. Where, what church was that? The Worldwide Church of God. The Worldwide Church of God? Yes. Growing up, you went to the Worldwide Church of God? Yes. And then you said, let me grow a dreadlock and then I can, I can always pray. Uh, and then I can still go back now. <laughs> they don't have... The, the thinking of the church was amazingly uh, empowering as well. Okay. Yeah, it was one church that in, encouraged you to be yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, well, music, that's where we could also play, read music. Oh. There was like a computer. The first time we tried to, to program. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we, we programmed there. But also, there was like a fire... Uh, uh, you know, shooting, uh, yeah, shooting in yeah. church, uh, yeah, yeah, mom, village, yeah, target shooting, pallets, ah, uh -uh. yeah, even why? girls as well. So it was why would, why would <laughs> I find it peculiar? No, it's just target shooting. No, I mean, why, 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 would, why would the church be interested in people learning how to, to shoot targets and stuff uh, like that? I guess we are the soldiers of the church. <laughs> <laughs> Who do, you, who do you pray to when you're praying? God. God. Yes. Because well, I know the people who pray to their ancestors. Uh, like, oh, she's look, looking and... You know, as a jazz musician, spirituality is very simple. Uh, I was speaking to my uh, sister, Joy, who, yeah. who, who preaches a lot as well, besides being a TV presenter. And I told her that, you know, when, we, when I play, and I'm, I'm talking about personality, I actually literally feel that thing. I call it that thing. And he, he says, I feel it also when I pray. It's like little, like a spark of spirituality. When you pray, come up with again, I like it takes you into another uh, form. For me, playing guitar is extremely spiritual as well. Um, it takes me to places where I can go also when I pray. So it's just not about uh, entertaining people, mm -hmm. but this is also who I am spiritually, physically. Uh, it's that serious? Yes. When you're playing? Yes. You feel a certain oh, yeah. sense of spirituality. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. That's why this for me it's a life, you know. Okay. And, and and usually when you play music that doesn't empower your yeah. spirit, you can't get there. Of you course, know. it shows when you are playing the guitar, mm -hmm. the passion yeah. and and the facial expressions. Mm -hmm. You can see we don't want to do. anymore. This our malevolent. Yeah, it might be like that. And you need to be careful of that world because that world it's. It's a very divine world. Carefully, and what what could happen? Um, you can sometimes you can feel you're bigger than a lot of people. Yeah. You know, sometimes it can you can feel like you're too special. Yeah. That's why I was saying earlier, don't not forget to come back to reality and be a human. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, these are gifts. It's it's like uh, be what you do as a uh, as a TV man. Yeah, yeah. You can misdirect the the, the whole world. Yeah. The whole so world. you're very careful about what you do. In your career but you put in your spirituality i think that's also why you are in this job i think that, that there have been cases of artists who feel like i think i'm no longer an ordinary human i'm superhuman mm -hmm. i guess that's what you're talking about because you yeah. get lost in a certain world oh, yeah. and you experience oh, yeah. things and then you come uh -huh. back and you're like i think i'm not like them yeah, my wife said, but that's who you are you know? and that's the whole <laughs> you're just you're just a human yeah. being so you go there you praise and then you come back and then you and then you've got other things to do as well. Well, that's that's really deep, and that's what we're coming to in Cruise Five today. A reminder: we're in Jinji at Kaisa Inn, just a few minutes away from Jinji Boma. Actually, a few more minutes away from Zambia. Yes. Do you ever cross into Zambia? Oh yeah, Chibata. Yeah. Yeah. Chibata. Hey, Chibata! Yeah. You just literally walk into, into spa, Zambia. Spa, I yeah, tell you, by Chibata. <laughs> it's it's closer <laughs> to go to Chibata, walk grab bread, than well, going to Lilongo. No, <laughs> <laughs> and our guest today is Eric Pagliani. Mm -hmm. He's a jazz artist and as he's telling us, he's, he's, he's got a wide range of influences and can play a wide range of instruments. And uh, let's see what kind of test of music he has. Um, what would be your third choice? Um, I'm, I'm looking for something Malawian. Yes. Uh -huh. And there's a couple of uh, artists that I'm following locally mm -hmm. that are doing great jobs. Yes. But I think there's a guy that I would love in the current yeah. state of mind. Yeah. Agoroso. You don't visit Agoroso. Agoroso. See, the first time I listened to that guy, mm. 
I didn't believe that he was performing because I listened to him performing. I didn't listen to his music on the CD. Mm -hmm. I I listened to him performing, and I was like, I, I had to pinch myself. Said this guy is right here. He's performing this mm -hmm. kind of music because mm -hmm. it was new. It was it was a fresh kind yeah. of uh, yeah. thing. No, I got us a minute. Agoroso. <laughs> Agora agoroso means something big. <laughs> so let's let's sample some agoroso. Whoa. This is Cruise Five, and today we're talking to Eric Pariani. He's a jazz producer. He's a songwriter. He is a singer in his own right. Spent quite a bit of time in South Africa, and uh, of course grew up in Malawi. And we just listened to a Malawian song, and some people say. Um, Malawian music doesn't have an identity. They say it has taken too much influence from other music genres so that you can't say this is Malawian music. Uh -huh. What do you think about that? Um, it's a tricky question. Yeah, do you? Because probably like an entertainment answer to that. Yes. But also there's a, you know, like a, a school, a the, you know, music theory answer to it. Yes. Uh, from a music theoretical point i think malawian music is suffering because it's too ahead yeah from what is happening meaning that it hasn't been diluted oh right so if you look at traditional malawian music the melodies are so weird as we put it yeah. and yet when you study jazz as you go further you end up studying the same things you go four years at uct on the fourth year what they're teaching you is something that Malawians have been doing for years. So that, that journey is also a bit confusing for me to answer. Is Malawian music back, backward or yeah. not? Uh, but I think, in my personal view, the problem is that Malawian music is actually, in traditional sense, more especially, is too ahead to be understood in the current. But where the world is going, you find that slowly, Number one, for said Santa mm -hmm. That's why we can also take Nimo Gadi Kwacha Kwaira, Yes. And then we are, even us, we are try, trying now to put the theory that we've, it's kind of new, because the songs historically are, are older than the theory that we are applying to translate the song. Yes. So, in my view, uh, on the traditional sense, Malayan music is actually ahead, or is actually equal to the musicians, traditional musicians of Cuba, traditional musicians of Algiers. And traditional musicians of Mongols. In the contemporary sense, we are not uh, digging much from these guys that are ahead. That's why we are now in a dilemma of looking at what has been f famous now from mm -hmm. uh, whether it be Nigeria, South Africa, and adding on to a bit of our music. So, in my view, it's a very tricky question. It is. Yeah. To bring it down to reality, to yes. what is happening now, yes. the what I find exciting as a music lover is that there are young people who are trying to fuse the traditional beat yes. with the pop beats that yeah. we, oh, yeah, we've definitely. gotten accustomed yes. to. Yes. And it's working. Oh yeah. Because the, the songs are now popular. But I think you need to balance the two. Yes. Uh, you can't just have music that is true traditional, you know, too, too hardcore. Yeah. But you also need to have music that is popular. You need to get the elements of the, uh, the hardcore into the popular mm -hmm. because once you've at one way you will connect yeah. a guy who's listening to popular music at one point wants something harder yeah. and also a guy that has been listening to heavy music at one point they, they wants to relax like yeah. eventually yeah. at 2 o'clock we just want to hear yeah. uh, you know yeah. and then have fun yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a balance of, and I think it's important to, to make sure that both are, are taken care of mm -hmm. because you can have a pop world without it, uh, a hardcore world. Yeah. Jazz music, mm. as a genre, mm. do, do you, when you're performing to the Malawian audience, mm. and I, I've seen you perform mm. before, do you think Mala the Malawian audience understands your music? Over the years, things have changed. You know, I remember when I started these performances, by, uh, and I think Zodiac has a couple of uh, the 2000, some, somewhere back, where it was just three of us trying to introduce the idea. And then you could play, and then we play three, four songs. And I remember playing at uh, Little Theatre, and uh, you know, and I opened my eyes, and I was like, Ah, no, this is not what we you. are getting too deep. Yes. So we kind of we tell each other, yeah, let's yeah. sweeten it up. Yeah. But uh, over the years, uh, this year has been interesting because um, I won't talk about the bigger gigs that I did. Yeah. But me and Danny so while we were actually uh, there's a small uh, bar in Area Forty Nine. Mm -hmm. Let me not get the name wrong, but I think it's uh, Fat 
something mm-hmm. but the way he has been playing mm-hmm. and it's just a normal bar and the reason why we went there was we wanted to taste how far can Malawians take jazz yes. but the chaos that goes there even playing a half song like take five yeah you find guys are getting into it and now what is happening is what I've been looking at it was once we play this mm-hmm. and we put in the traditional sense you find that a guy is now dancing now yeah on this jazz yes and that was my whole mission ah. so Malawians are hip man yeah they will get this they're getting it they'll get it yeah they'll and actually since they have it remember I said to you traditional Malawi music is not far away from it's not far away from what yeah. everybody else yeah, is singing it's, yeah it's actually a slight leave in our head was the times are you know when you look at musical things the Malawi time is very complex mm-hmm. in modern times just four four yes Malawi times gets to six seven eight wow. twelve eight yeah. you know sometimes it's it's like a phrase it's a time yeah. so it if you were teaching at a college you only bring the Malawian songs like to maybe master uh, master master students that's how complex our music is you performing I know you've performed at major gigs tell me about the places you've been to and you're like wow this this was massive just look back at your career and the things that you've done uh, hey that uh, in every moment you're right it's ha- it has its own uh, moments that you it's remember. got its own magic uh, the, the first gig I, have, I remember was uh we were playing at the Lilongo uh, community grounds uh-huh and this should be about nine maybe 92 yes we had a small young group called the uh, hot kids the hot kids uh-huh. uh-huh. and uh, we, at, at that point we had a friend also Charles Jewe yes he was still a yes yes yeah, yeah I know Charles Jewe uh, yes. yes so that was Aleria band had brought in the first equipment yeah. from Italy and, yes uh, uh, big man Paul band was yeah. there yeah. so that was the first gig we ever played as young kids to a whole big you know uh, stadium yeah. with great equipment yeah so that gig was like the beginning point of uh, uh, it stayed in my mind I was like ah so this this is how it feels like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 and then uh, Acacia also had some great gigs yes um, South Africa uh, recording uh, for every mountain yes. with Benjamin Dube yes that was also interesting fantastic uh, um i can at uh, this lots you know but i can, if I can fast forward the, the the show that a lot of people talk about the, yes. uh, the show with human sega at lugano mm-hmm. that was good was also it taught me how quickly europeans can do a production it was the, pro, uh, the the actual footage of that show and recording we, we got it straight after the recording wow so like they do online so they wow our engineer is mixing the gig He's sending uh, back to where the guys are uh, recording it, and one is uh, online mixing the recording. Jeez! And then, but literally by five minutes, once you you're done off stage, the guys it's ready. It. Yeah, it's ready. So that recording I've had it like five minutes after that rec- the, the show. That's unbelievable. So that was, for me, it was like wow. That, uh, yeah, this you can see also teamwork. You see yeah. cameras, uh, like everything coming all together, but real time. Do you get nervous getting on stage? Oh yeah, definitely. You do? Yes, I like that. I mean, that that's what pushes the gig. Oh, does it? Like the greatest gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was another good gig. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Because it was like first time I played back at the township in you know after a while. And, yes. Uh, oh, the reaction was good. You get there and you're like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just have to deliver with this kind of expectation. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, the nerves. Uh, the, the, there's a saying in our world that when the nerves die. That's the end of your career. Oh. Yeah, but the nerves are the the the, the, They're the drivers. Yes. It's uh, while you're maintaining the ne- nerves, that's what makes you even play, choose the yes. right notes, don't overplay, don't over, you know, do things at the right time. So yeah. You do you it. listen to your own music? Um, by the time I release it, I've heard it so many times. So not after the release. Yes. But it, eventually, like after a year, I mean, I'm, I'm loving the Chitukutuku album here. Oh, yeah, that was. Because I recorded that side, pro, you know, thinking about that, that, that was a master. So when I play here now, and also I'm in a, uh, I'm, I'm recording, I'm, you know, writing a new album. Yeah. So I'm getting into that, uh, uh, I'm listening to what I did a lot. I listen to it, and uh, sometimes I don't want to listen to it, but then uh, I can switch. Yeah. I can become a listener. 
yeah yeah and listen to your music yeah. just like you just yeah. you just stumbled upon yeah. a certain yeah. old record and yeah. like let me listen to this yeah man. or if someone is listening to you i can listen to it yeah. yes i can listen to it. the inspiration to do music mm -hmm. the songs that you write mm -hmm. where does that come from um I'm, I'm always trying to put literature poetry ideology into what i'm doing yes so the, the, like the first album was mostly about you know thinking of home mm -hmm. but then showing home to friends and then translating home but they've never been there yes so that's why chitukuru itself makes sense yeah because it's like you are alone yeah you came with a lot of people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so the whole point was malawi out of malawi what yeah. would, would it be yes so it's very imaginative yeah the streets are uh, uh four four way the, mm -hmm. the street lights mm -hmm. it's solar in the villages mm -hmm. it's uh it's 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 what i think malawi should be in the next should be now or should, be, should have been or it will be in the next 20 years mm -hmm. whereby uh, you don't have to be in town to see lights mm -hmm. you know if you i'm in a village now so i see the there's a lot of progress happening in the village yeah uh solar is kicking in yeah yeah uh, there's a guy who's uh, there's a pub up the road the guy is just on i don't know where i don't even know where he's getting the electricity from <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> you're like dude yeah, yeah. So, you're not part of so, <laughs> so the record was about that imaginative world of malawi so even like the guys that are playing they're very slick over yeah. the malawian song yes yeah it's 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 malawi bourgeoisie malawi it's rural malawi mm -hmm. it's uh it's just that story man so let's go to our fourth song now um the f let's hear a bit of bob Marley. Man. Hey. You know, um, Growing up in the 80s Eesh. as a young kid. See, we had, a, we had an interesting debate with someone. Yes. Bob Marley and Michael Jackson. Yeah. Shash and Dindani. Uh, Onse. Ah, my own asshole. Because I'll tell you why. What? They are completely different people. Hey, my baby, I'm going to catch Shash and Mozart. Ah, imagine. When I do, when we are you? The apples are not They are in the same team. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Marley. <laughs> I was just at Bob Marley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, but, 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 uh, Michael Jackson isn't Bob. <laughs> That's a question. But personal. If, if you ask me personal, it's just what I'm done. It's just what I'm Bob Marley. I think that's the thing. It depends on who you're <laughs> asking. Yeah. Shash and Dinari. To you. It's an age old question. It's who is, the same question. Who's, who's the greatest who is, of them all? Who's good between uh, uh, Bob Marley and Peter Tosh? Yes. You know, that causes. Hey, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. that's a battle. That's a battle. You know, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's sample some Bob Marley now. So get up and stand up, please. Yes, stand up for your right. Yes, stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Get up and stand up. That's that's almost like a political song. Because uh, I mean, the message, the ideology is yeah. about people standing up oh, for yeah. their rights. Oh yeah, for sure. Do, do you ever get political in your music? Uh, I'm, I'm a musician. Every musician, I cannot run away from politics. Yeah, we are political. We are affected by political decisions mm -hmm. but um, i'm not a polit uh, politician as to who do i vote for which side i link to as we say i'm more into that especially I, I'm, I'm more excited that people need to understand their basic rights mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I want malawians to know you know um, a lot of i was telling uh, there's a joke i always tell here that yeah. here i can wear a camouflage mm -hmm. and wear like a you know, yeah 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 and I'm passing for me yeah. because people don't even know when you can be arrested or when you can't be arrested. Yeah. So there's a lot. I'm a bit concerned at the understanding of the basic human rights of people. Uh, in comparison to a country like South Africa, for instance, even a drunkard understands his rights. You won't even arrest him just because he's drunk. He's he'll, be, he'll be you. He'll, he'll be calling out the constitution. You can't arrest me based on this. this and my rights and, and, and you know. So it's for me. It's about yeah. You gotta stand up and know your rights so that you can also even uh, um, you can even vote well mm -hmm. when you understand your rights. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I, we used to be get excited a bit when we were young in standard six, because yeah, civics. Yes, they taught us about our rights, but yeah. not only our rights as yeah. such, which is something that we only talk about now. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, what are your duties as a citizen? Exactly. So we grew up understanding your rights have to be you have to balance your rights and your duties what do you like about malawi as a country it's like uh, an untapped gold you know uh, we're not operating our full potential and we will get there mm -hmm. and i think this is a place where one can 
bring out new ideologies to empower the people. Um, you know, new ways of farming are new. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, organic farming is still new, or we or we remember it. You know, so this is a, for an investor, for 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 a teacher, for for a guy, a hustler. Mm -hmm. This is a place to be. You know, if that's a word. Um, yeah, so on the negative side, as we're saying, we need to, to be able to com be competitive. Mm -hmm. As we speak now, the world is competing. Yes, the Zambians are competing with us. Let's not hide about it. That's yeah. why they build bigger roads than yeah. us, or that's why they do something and amplify it. Yeah. Um, uh, it be it in soccer, you know, there's com that's why there's competition. Even in what we do. You know, they, 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 every time I tell them like I'm from Malawi, I play jazz. And, Is there jazz in Malawi? You know, so that's what that's a competition. And yeah. it's it's something that we need to do, and we need to let's be competitive. Mm -hmm. Even how you do the program. Yeah. You guys, you know, when I watch the TV, yeah. sometimes I, I don't even know whether I'm watching Yabu Kenya, yeah. Boni, or I'm watching us Africa. You guys are being competitive. Yeah. The gear that you guys brought here, yeah, since yeah. you got from the yeah. thank you, yeah. it's about being competitive. And I think sometimes as Malawians, we are mm -hmm. happy to lose. Yeah. Or we, just to be in the middle. We are resigned. Yeah, we yeah. need to change. Yeah. It's okay, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where you are as a Malawian alone, you need to shine extra. Mm -hmm. and, and because you're carrying everyone that will come as a Malawian after you. So you are here now yeah. uh, in Jinji mm -hmm. at uh, this inn. Mm -hmm. Are you here to stay or are you just passing by? Because um, you're a true son of Africa. You seem to like moving from one place to another. Uh, the struggle goes on. Yeah. You know, and the struggle had. I had forgotten Malawi for years. Yes. You know, so the most important thing is I wanted to establish a place where I can work from okay. and also be able to invite uh, my friends to my home. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends, especially after playing the Chitukutu album, they kept on saying, man, we play this music, but we've never been to your house. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't been, uh, we, I want to play this music for Malawi. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so one of my biggest uh, ambitions is to make sure that Malawi is a place that we can bring jazz artists they will be teaching, but they can also record their albums. So in the next two years, we'll ensure that the gear that we have is world-class gear, that you can invite Huma Sega or anyone else to say, look, on your next album, come and record here. But also use the facilities that we have. We've got great singers. We've got uh, one of our friends, my name is Mr. Gideon, is yeah, yeah. my African drama. Yeah. I watch Ankumbare. <laughs> but, but it's to get the guys to come and play uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying, personally, I'm trying to cut the nonsense of what I went through. Carry a guitar, go right into a place where you didn't know, and then take so many ah. years to know. If I did that, I don't want to see another youngster do that. Doing that, so if you, going if, somewhere if, to make the, it in life. Uh -huh, the more you Let them do it right here. Oh. If you want to go out there, it's, it might be because you want to, you're, you're bigger than anyone, mm -hmm. or that's just what you want, mm -hmm. but not as a necessity. Mm -hmm. So it's to bring more of the education here. Uh, obviously, there's when I'm here, the Zambia is also calling. Yes. You know, so, oh my God, and so, so close. Yeah, so yeah, we, need, we need to get worried. Maybe we need to pull you <laughs> further into the country because you're so close to Zambia here. It's like one leg and phew, you're in Zambia. Yeah. That's not safe at all. No, it is. <laughs> <laughs> So we are in your studio. Mm -hmm. Have you used this studio before, like recording an album or something? Uh, we're doing some trio albums. Okay. Um, um, we're recording Dan. All right. Dan Swale, the home Dan Swale. Yeah, there's a young, uh, another uh, artist called Chimwebe Pidi. Yes. That is done a couple of songs. Uh, but mostly what I'm doing here is to write also my new album, which is has to be released next year. It's been a while, eh? Yeah. So, it's been a while. And this one is a bit tricky because I'm actually going extremely more jazz as well as electric is power. Yes. Yeah, so uh, half of it I'm trying to record it and bring some friends over the side okay. from South Africa uh -huh. and then also we we'll, we'll take the files that side. Yeah. We we'll get some local South Africans to, to, to do as well. And this room, I mean, it's it's full of history, it's full of memories, I'm sure. Is there any particular picture that uh, that is a special space in your, in your heart? Uh, and weirdly, this is, most of these pictures are Kimba's pictures. Okay. But the picture I requested was that one. It's, yes. It's his mother. Okay. And she's dancing Chitere. <laughs> so that one I requested that was here we are doing more jazz on a Chitere <laughs> point of view. That one really truly, it's, it's got a beautiful smile. It, it's, it's, it's Malawi jazz yes. when I look at that picture. Yes. 
<laughs> Fantastic picture. Yeah. Um, we need to wind up now. Yes. And um, I've got a, a set of questions that I'd like to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I can only allow you to answer yes or no to those mm -hmm. questions. <laughs> The only first question that you have to answer in full is, you tell us your full name. Yes. What's your full name? Uh, Tendai Erickson Balia. Do you have any tattoos? No, not yet. Do you have any piercings? No. Do you have children? Yes. Have you ever shot a gun? Uh, I don't pallet guns, no. In comparison to pallet guns, no. Like a proper gun? No. No. Have you ever cried over someone? Yes. Have you fallen in love before? Yes. Have you killed a chicken before? Yes. Have you gotten into a fight before? Yes. Have you gotten any surgeries? Uh, minor one, yes. Minor one. <laughs> <laughs> minor surgeries. Uh, I'm okay with that. Because it's just yes or no, so you don't have to tell us about it. <laughs> have you ever been hospitalized? Oh, yeah. Have you donated blood? Yes. Have you ever smoked weed? Yes. Have you ever drunk alcohol? Yes. Have you broken someone's heart? Yes. Have you had a crush on someone? Yes. I guess we end there. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but about the family, I never asked if you've got a wife and children. I've got children. Okay. Yeah. But you don't have a wife? Not yet. How many children do you have? I've got two. You've got two children. Mm -hmm. And how old are they? Uh, it's 12 and uh, 2. Okay. Mm. Now that's a huge gap there. Yes. What was happening in between? Music? Uh, studying music. Uh, <laughs> so, two, are we waiting for another 10 years before? Uh... Uh, no, no, no. These two are into music, so they're enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can predict, you know. If, if they, but for now, those are really, they touch my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, they're enough. Let me bring them home, see yeah. home, and then see. What happens? Are you looking at getting married at any point? Ah, yeah, every, every person looks at that. I yeah. Think as you grow, you need to get to a person. So the, op the options are still open. Uh, as a human being, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Eric Pagliani, our guest today in Cruise 5. And as we wind, I've got a little challenge that I'd like us to do. You are a musician, yes. and I would like to think that I can do one of your favorite songs, which is Chitukutuku. Uh -huh. Can we play that song? Let's try that. Fantastic. So we're going to do Chituku Tuku with Eric Pariani now. Um, it's, it's Yao, isn't it? It is Yao. Yes. What is the song saying? Uh, it's all about as well, saying Chituku Tuku, I'm alone. You know? Yeah. Giga. Sigere Giga. I'm all alone. I'm left just, uh, in, a, in, a, in a foreign land. Yes. You know, what you want in Bangari. All yeah. the Yao friends. Have yeah, gone. I, I've gone. Either they are dead or gone. Ah, it's such a, it's a nostalgic song. Uh, it's very nostalgic. So it says, Oh, it's a bird. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that sound was reminding, it was I didn't answer So I didn't ask So that bird. reminds me of But this is a Yao song. Do, do you speak Yao like, or you just had to learn Yao for this, for this song? Um, uh, at home, we always not very far away because okay. my mom is a Kamesa. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. From Abumaleule.